experience as an information technology professional. Prior to joining GuidePoint, Jonathan worked at Central Florida ISP, specializing in web application policy and compliance and Red Hat Linux system administration and hardening. Currently, Jonathan leads the SIM and SOAR professional services team for the Southeast region and is a certified Splunk architect. Jonathan participates in many speaking engagements throughout the East Coast, currently, currently holds a CEH and several SANS certifications and a master's degree of cybersecurity from the University of South Florida. With that being said, I present you Jonathan Singer. Thank you so much, Ernest. All right, well, let's just kick things off here. Uh, I believe my slides are up on the screen already, so we'll just go ahead and begin. So welcome, everybody. This is SDR Base Stations with Raspberry Pis. And again, my name is Jonathan Singer. So the agenda for today is a little bit about who am I? We'll talk about the basics of radio and some history. We'll talk about what is an SDR. Uh, how about some radio hardware and software, because that's always fun. And I actually have fun, three little fun projects you too can build at home. So our first project would be something called a freak show, you'll see. The second project's an ADSB receiver. Huh, maybe some of you have heard of that. And the third product is an APRS, uh, you know, kind of base station. So we'll get into some of those details. And then finally, I like to wrap things up with legalities and learning. So where can you find more? Okay, so who am I? I do things, right? So I got a master's of the cybers from a, from a bowl school. I got a bachelor's from a night school. I uh, do stuff at DEF CON and at OWASP and B-Sides Orlando. And, and we mentioned GuidePoint. And I apparently have some certs from SANS. Uh, I do lots of presentations. I love this stuff. So this is fun. Um, and uh, you know, I hope to, to see everybody on more conferences in the future. So let's kick right into it. The basics of radio and history, because we definitely need to know what our foundations are, right? And so let's take a look at this idea, right? And we have two things. We have RX and TX. RX is short for receiving. This is listening. This is passive. It just happens to be existing. My coworker and I were having a conversation earlier, and he said he listened uh, to passively listen to somebody read off their credit card number on a phone call in a public space. That's never a good thing, but the idea is that you're just simply listening. TX, you're transmitting is when you're sending stuff, you're adding to those airwaves. It is an active experience. Uh, it also may be illegal in some cases, and we'll get to that. And so we have stuff like a radio transmitter, for instance, when we're talking about RC cars, and then you have a radio receiver, right? Something, so, so one is sending, one's receiving, and then that little controller, the flight controller, right? And so just wanna kind of build some groundwork and baseline here. Okay. Another thing that's really important too is just, you know, understanding the concept of modulation, right? And so we have AM and FM modulation and just kind of these, these basics. So amplitude modulation is going to be more about like, you know, the, the height of that you can see in the AM signal in the bottom left, right? That, 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 amplitude is greater or lesser, whereas something like frequency modulation of the carrier wave, where it's how often those waves exist. And you can see it on the bottom right. Now, this is not a test and neither you, you don't really need to memorize a lot of this stuff. I just want to kind of iterate the basics. And now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about what is an SDR, a software defined radio, right? And to really simply put it, Wikipedia describes this as a radio communication system where the components been traditionally implemented in hardware. So it's uh, a radio is a, an appliance. It's a big piece of machinery, but we've taken all of that and we've abstracted that into the means of a software or a computer, right? In our case, our computer is going to be the Raspberry Pi. It's a very small computer, but it still is a computer. And so now that we've taken that concept of we don't need big machinery anymore, we can solve all of this in software. Let's see where we've came from. And so real quickly, the history of this is that the first digital receiver was, the concept was like coined in the 70s, right? By the Department of Defense. And by digital receiver, we mean that a computer was programmed at the software level to work with data and from the airwaves, right? And, and this whole concept in between. And so definitely super cool stuff. Um, from there, we got, got into the 80s where the, the actual concept of software radio was introduced. Um, and that was 
building software specifically to perform stuff like demodulation of this airwave data without the necessary bulk hardware that you know you used to need uh, in legacy environments. This eventually led to additional research that was published in IEEE in the 90s. And so it took quite a few decades to really catch up to the concept of no longer needing specialty built hardware to solve something with code and software. Finally, the software defined radio that we know it today was coined in, the, in 95. Um, and it started out like all good things that we have, military research efforts uh, that have made their way into the public space. So from there, that research project was called the Speak Easy Program. This is the first public software radio initiative, right? And this is helped put on by DARPA, right? And so the Speak Easy Program was really cool. It had this goal to be programmable of processing data. And, and the idea was that it could emulate and if not replace over 10 different existing military hardware systems. So imagine physical equipment being used to do radio communications. And if we can convert all of that down to a piece of software, we're solving so many things and we're shrinking the carrying requirements of soldiers. I mean, there were so many benefits to converting a hardware implementation into a software and code. Finally, you know, Speakeasy was, you know, what we wanted to, um, make this also publicly available to get it in the hands of as many people as possible because that's how you start to identify opportunities for improvement and growth and it continued to advance like through different techniques and people found different uses for it and just kept adding to it and it was just like super cool that this this concept started growing and again this is back in the 90s so now that we've established a nice baseline of what's going on and where we're going with this, let's talk about some of the hardware, right? Um, what I love about this, and I'm a big hardware fan, if any of you know me. And so the first one I wanna just kind of give a nice shout out here is to the Hack RF1. And everything I'm gonna talk about today is stuff that you can go out and buy online. Now I know your wallet's already crying, but trust me, this stuff is really cool. And so the HackRF1 is a very unique device, right? It's what's called half duplex transceiver. That means it can only send or receive, uh, but not at the same time, but it can send, right? And so it has an operating frequency of up to six gigahertz, 20 million samples per second. I know a lot of this doesn't mean much to most people, but what's interesting at the end of the day is that this little you know, device here is a USB piece of hardware that plugs in your computer, you plug into your antenna and you're up and running already sampling the data from the airwaves and all these different signals. And you also have the ability to send. Uh, it does start around the $300 range for an original Great Scott Hack RF, but you can probably get a clone these days from China for about a hundred. Not condoning it, but they're out there point is, this is a great place to start when it comes to really getting into the research of software defined radio and the capabilities of it. I do want to make an honorable mention to the very well lovely Porta Pack. I happen to have one right here. This is my Porta Pack and it is super cool. And so what happens is inside this device is a Hack RF1 and it's got a full interface uh, with a screen, touch screen and a dials that allows you to make uh, on the fly modifications. So it's a great update to your Hack RF1 if you get the opportunity to um, build one out. And uh, so it comes as a kit and an addition. Um, but so far, what's, what's, what I'm talking about is these are very purpose-built pieces of hardware. And they're also you know, kind of on the pricey side. One of the other great pieces of software defined radio hardware out there is something called the Lime SDR. And this is definitely one of my favorites. What's really cool about this piece of hardware, it does full duplex. That means you are now capable of using software to not just receive radio data, but you can also send radio data. And now that can be dangerous at times and you need to make sure you're in the right place. But this is the kind of hardware that can be used for all different kinds of things. For instance, you can use it for radio astronomy and radar. But what I like the most is the fact that these are one of the pieces of hardware, how you build like a femtocell or a cellular base station. So pair this with a small computer, like a Raspberry Pi, and you can actually run your own cellular network. Um, you would need to look into the, the legalities and the operating of that. But Today, hardware is within price range and achievable to do these kinds of things. So it's not just the people building stingrays that can do interception. You have the ability too. 
So definitely very cool stuff. All their hardware or maybe stuff that's more familiar and more, I don't know, let's say f affordable is the great RTL SDR. And so one of these little guys here is within reach. And what this device is going to do is it's going to give you a USB interface to a radio connector and allow you to pick up very common frequencies, right, up to the, about 1.8. 8 gigahertz range. And that's going to cover a lot of the things that you may be receiving for uh, stuff like uh, advisory messages in your community, FM radio, AM radio, so you can listen to music and also some television channels. And this is a great introduction into getting into software defined radio. These pieces of hardware are very cheap and readily available online. And so uh, definitely really cool to check it out. I do also want to mention this very interesting tool called a car. And you can see there that it has four antennas. It's actually four of these little RTL SDRs built into a single unit. But do you see that little thing on top there? that actually happens to be a Raspberry Pi header. So this device is built specifically for mod like adding a raspberry pi to it to be that software controller uh, fantastic little device definitely on the more expensive side but one of the benefits to having multiple antennas when it comes to a software defined radio is you can do direction finding and passive radar and by direction finding i mean you place four antennas out and basically you can measure the signal strength and determine in which direction based off of which antennas are getting stronger signals from a device. So you can do like scavenger hunts in the real world with little devices that are broadcasting uh, messages. You can also use it though to find pirate radio stations. So again, I'm going on about some really cool stuff and let's, uh, let's start to show you what you can really do with this. And I promise you there's a lot you can do with a uh, software-defined radio. This list goes on, but I've highlighted in bold a couple of the cool things. Uh, tracking aircraft is a fantastic hobby that I love to do. Decoding POXAG or flex pager traffic is also awesome. Did you know we still use pagers today? Yes, we do. And you can pick it up with an RTL SDR. Sniffing GSM signals. Yes, cell phone signals are absolutely within range. Receiving NOAA satellite weather images. There's actually NOAA satellites passing overhead everywhere in the world, and they are broadcasting down image data from the satellite. And you can pick it up with one of these little um, software-defined radios. Um, you, I mentioned you can listen to FM radio and music. And finally, the International Space Station is also part of this game. So lots of cool stuff out there. Whew, hardware done. Let's talk about some software. This is the part that you can explore. This is the part where you get involved. Now, there's a ton of different tools for Windows and Linux. GNU Radio is one of the most versatile tools. I personally use a GQRX on my Mac. And then for the Windows fans out there, SDR Sharp is also a great uh, tool. SDR, the SDR Play team that also makes hardware does have their own software called SDR Uno. But these are some great places to get started when it comes to pairing your little dongle with your computer and seeing what you can start to pick up. First build project, as promised, this is what I like to call the Freak Show. Well, I mean, I didn't pick the name. This is the name that was assigned to it from the developers, but I do want to share it with everybody. So I'm not just kind of looking away. I'm actually building it up and powering it on. Let's talk about what this device is. So a Freak Show or a frequency analyzer, right? We take a Raspberry Pi, we pair it with an RTL SDR dongle, right? These very cheap $25 ones. And so as this boots up in Linux, what it's gonna do is it's gonna run a piece of software and it's gonna give us the capabilities to do frequency analysis on the fly. So this is a full mobile frequency analyzer that's touchscreen. It's a really cool device. It runs on um, Raspberry Pi OS. And so I have it up and running right here. And so the whole build kind of looks like this. And you can see here, it's already scanning the airwaves. So pair this with a battery pack and a Raspberry Pi and you're ready to go. So you want to build one yourself? Super simple. All you need is a cheap uh, Pi touchscreen and a case, right? Anything will work. Slap it all together. A nice cheap RTL SDR. An antenna would be helpful. You absolutely need one of those. 
And I found that sometimes using a stylus with the touch screen gives it an extra bit. And this project was put out by Adafruit. So all the documentation is available online for this freak show. Uh, the setup is really simple. You get your memory card, you get that uh, the OS installed, uh, you get your screen drivers for that touch screen. Again, that software is from Adafruit and it's on GitHub. And then you simply just run the freak show Python file. I personally like it to auto start but it's a fantastic, really cool, fun tool. You can set the frequency, that range that you wanna monitor and a way you can go. And it also has a couple different views. So right now we're in the bar and like the graph and if we simply touch it, uh, oh, sorry. If we go to switch mode, we can also get a waterfall view and we can see all those red parts are actually, I have it set to FM stations like radio music and those are actually stations. And so that's the signal strengths of this stuff in my area. So first project, I hope everybody enjoys it and thinks it's super cool. Hopefully this is something that everybody can build out and achieve if they wanna have a handheld frequency analysis tool that they can take places with them. Now, uh, while we're kind of talking about the idea of software that you can start working with on a project, there are some really cool pre-built tool stacks, right? And I talked about using um, Raspberry Pi OS or Raspbian to get this up and running, um, but there actually is a Pi SDR image. So this is a complete image that you can flash onto the memory card of a Raspberry Pi and you're up and running and ready to go. And it's got all of the tools pre-installed. We mentioned earlier stuff like GNU Radio and GKRX, but also it has the tools capable for some of the Lime SDR stuff um, and Multimon to allow you to handle multiple pieces of equipment. And so it's a really cool pre-modified Raspbian image uh, and it's compatible with every Raspberry Pi. So if you don't wanna start from scratch and install the software yourself, go ahead and check out the Pi SDR image pre-built with everything you need to get you up and running with your favorite hardware. Our second build project as promised, this one is gonna be a plane spotting device. And so I've been running one of these in my house for about five years now, and it's called a PiAware. And PiAware is put out by the Flight Aware website and it's a pre-built operating system and you flash it onto the memory card like anything else. And it gives you the opportunity to plug in, again, another little USB dongle into a Raspberry Pi. And yes, for those that are fans, this is an original Raspberry Pi generation one. That's how long I've been running this. Um, and so you pair that and you plug in the antenna and I stick it in a window on a second floor and it gives me a broad range that I can see all of the uh, commercial aircraft uh, and other airplane vehicles and helicopters that are broadcasting on the signal specific to plane communication in my area. And so let's talk a little bit about this, right? We, what we're doing here is we're taking our ground station, we're giving, we're making it available to ourselves and we're updating or uploading this live flight data to flightaware.com as part of their support program. And so that's how they get the opportunity to see where all these planes are live in the air. It's because there's thousands of little base stations all over the world running on Raspberry Pis. It's uh, now when you're running it on your local network, yes, you get access to up to the second live data received by the device. And so that web interface I had up is actually a screenshot of what's like, it looks like from my house right now here over in St. Pete. Um, and then uh, you can then track all this additional data on FlightAware. And again, uh, FlightAware is a really cool site. Uh, and to get started with this program, they have a lot of great documentation on there about how to get your Raspberry Pi set up, what hardware is suggested, um, and how to get the most out of it. And actually, my favorite part of all of this is you get an enterprise account for being a contributor. And so by running PiAware on your Raspberry Pi, you're not just seeing all this great data in the airwaves, but you are also um, contributing to the website and helping them live plot all this information and compare all the data they're receiving. You get an enterprise account, which I'm a travel bug. When work sends me out places, this helps me know exactly where everything is, all my inbound and outbound flights. So I just think it's an extra benefit. So what do you need to build this thing up? 
Well, ADS-B runs on a very specific frequency. It runs on 1090 megahertz, but also has a portion of it on 978, but we'll focus on the 1090. And so what happens is ADS-B, or also known as next gen, is airplane communications or pretty much anything floating in the sky these days. And, uh, and we use a piece of software called Dump 1090. Again, it's preloaded on the image from the FlightAware team. And you use a little dongle. Now you can get a dongle from FlightAware or you can just get one of these super cheap ones um, off the internet. And we decode this information. So we're passively listening. We're not transmitting anything. And the plane is constantly communicating all different types of data about where it is and what direction it's heading and its velocity and its altitude and its tail number, all kinds of great information, right? And you can compare that online and even look up the individual planes and where they're flying from and where they're flying to. And so to put this together, super simple. You don't even need a case. I mean, I have a case, but it's a little acrylic thing. You don't need a screen. All you need is a Raspberry Pi, any model will do, a little SDR dongle. You can even use the antenna that's included with it, right? A little cheapo antenna. Although getting a more upgraded one is better because initially you may only get about 50 to 100 miles of visibility from your location. If you have an upgraded antenna, you can see up to 300 miles from your location, all of the airplanes in the sky. And so very cool uh, concept here. Now, um, you do want to make sure you do have a clear view of the sky, that you're not like under anything or any kind of debris or trees in the area. So you want to want to give it a clear, you know, unobstructed view. Um, but uh, but fantastic, fun little project. And like I said, I've been running this myself at, uh, at my house for many, many, many years. Uh, and I really do enjoy um, participating in the flight aware program and just kind of get an idea of what's flying overhead. I happen to be in a flight path and so it, I can immediately take a look on the Raspberry Pi's web interface and see what plane it is and if it's JetBlue or whatever, where it's coming from and, and all that fun stuff. So really cool project. Uh, the software is also very easy. As I mentioned, it's a pre-built OS. So you just go ahead and pull that from the uh, PiWare repository or from their website at flightaware.com. Then once you get the device up and running, you have to claim it on their website. So you create an account and identify your device calling home. And then from there, stats away. So you jump in uh, and have some fun. I want to also give a shout out to Boats. Like to have fun too. Um, uh, also, shout out to the Suez Canal. Uh, and so, like boat or like planes, boats also are very talkative, right? And so, equally, there's software out there that you can use the same setup to pull in boat data. So, if you happen to be near a port, this may be of interest to you to track live boat communication and location data. God, I, I, Suez Canal probably looks like a mess right now. But um, but what this is, is it's called AIS. That's the name of the system that is used by maritime tracking. And it happens to operate on 162 megahertz. And so this ship tracking, there is an image, this RPI AIS image that's out there and available. And you want to check out the, the uh, dispatcher, right? And so this is going to be the active decoder. And it's going to help you identify some of those things. And so what people do is like... Uh, myself, when they set them up for airplanes, people go along the coast in all different ports and set these systems up to track where boats are uh, live in the real world uh, from radio waves. And, and again, you know, planes and boats, what they're doing is they're constantly communicating with each other. They're sending information back and forth. Who am I? Where am I going? How fast am I going? Right. Um, and, and what's my GPS coordinates and all this great stuff. And so, so this is happening live in real time all over the world from all these different uh, maritime ships and storage uh, container ships and, and Boeing planes and Airbus planes. Like it's really fantastic and crazy how much data and communications are happening in the airwaves around us. And something as simple as these little devices like a Raspberry Pi paired with an SDR, we can start picking this information right out of the air uh, and decoding it and seeing what they're saying and plotting this data on maps and doing research. And it's really, really, really cool. You know? So on to our third project, you two can build at home. 
Now, I'm going to kind of preface this. This is definitely not my specialty. This kind of goes out more to those ham folks, right? And so we're going to talk about a project that is focused for the, the ham community. Um, and I'm just going to say, first off, I am not uh, a ham radio uh, expert by any means. Um, but this is going to be really interesting. Right, and so we, there's a system called APRS, right? The Automated Packet Reporting System. Um, and what it is, is it's a real-time communication system, um, uh, digital, right, through the airwaves. And it gives you the opportunity to share information and share messages. Um, and so what's really cool about this is it's like having your own private mini radio network, right? Now, oftentimes APRS is used for plotting locations of moving objects like vehicles, so cars, maybe somebody who's out hiking or on a bike ride. Um, uh, but essentially the concept is those devices, the information they would be transmitting is, this is where I'm at, this is my GPS location, this is the speed I'm moving, right? Other uses of, of this, you know, kind of short range, digital real-time communication is gonna be stuff like radio station telemetry or weather station telemetry. And so these are places that are broadcasting the weather all day and all night, just automatically sending it out over the airwaves for other people to pick up and analyze and read. Um, and so I kind of throw this in there. Think of it like a short messages, like an SMS for ham radio stars. Um, and so, so what we're doing here is we can use something called an eye gate uh, and a digipeter, right? And we can build a base station. So we're now um, moving from the fact that all of these messages and bits of information exist within the airwaves around us, and we can collect them into our computer and start to decode them and start to analyze what they're, what they're sending, um, and even maybe even send ourselves and participate if we have the proper licenses. And so these digipeters, they listen for um, these radio packets in the airwaves, they receive them, and then they repeat them so they can help, you know, expand and broaden the network, like almost like bouncing points across a vast um, system or network of base stations. You know, if you can't reach a certain distance, then you can have digipeters to help broadcast it and rebroadcast it farther. And then there's the concept of an eye gate. This is taking it to a whole nother level. We're taking stuff that exists in the airwaves, radio packet data, and we're capturing it and forwarding it over the internet and then brought rebroadcasting it on other eye gates. So now suddenly a ham radio person using a standard radio can send a message, it get picked up by an eye gate, sent over the internet and it can be rebroadcasted as a radio message in another country. I mean, this is super cool stuff here and you have the capability of um, sending and receiving data on a global scale, all thanks to the help of a Raspberry Pi, right? And so what does this look like? Um, I mean, let's just think of it this way, right? You have passive, right? We talked about this earlier with the concept of uh, RX and TX, receive and transmit it, right? And so passive eye gates are going to essentially listen um, to all of these airwaves and you collect it with your Raspberry Pi and SDR paired together. And then you can rebroadcast online and rebroadcast the other senders. So even you without a ham license can participate in this stuff by being a passive listener and, um, and capturing this information and, and making it useful and available for others to pick up. So what does this look like? Well, you take your fantastic cheap little Raspberry Pi, again, any model doesn't matter. You use your RTL SDR, um, and you want to have some kind of uh, device, right? Especially if you're transmitting, you can use some kind of, of radio device. And again, if you have a ham license, transmitting is going to be just fine. But if you want to participate and just kind of listen to some of the data packets that exist out there and, and be a part of this really broad community, I think, um, you know, uh, some of the, the passive experiences are going to be great, but it doesn't take much to kind of just get set up and to listen in on the APRS, uh, you know, frequencies and some of these messages. And again, this isn't going to hit home with everybody, but for those ham folks, hopefully you get something good out of this. Uh, the software setup is fairly simple. You use a piece of software called Direwolf. It's right there on GitHub. 
And um, essentially the idea is that this software is going to help you decode the data that's coming in out of the airwaves on your Raspberry Pi. And you can, again, uh, broadcast this out over the internet to other eye gates. You can decode these messages. You can even, um, you know, start to break down some of the packets because this is going to be data sent. So you can potentially send images. You can send voice. You can send codes. You can send all kinds of really cool stuff. So be sure to check it out. Oof. Three projects, as promised, but there's more, right? What can you do with a Raspberry Pi and a software-defined radio? Okay, I like this one. NOAA and Meteor, which, by the way, Meteor is the Russian weather data system. Um, but NOAA, right, uh, they are, I mentioned this earlier, the weather satellites are taking pictures of Earth from space and then broadcasting that picture just captured by a space satellite back down to Earth to be picked up by the average people like you and me. This can easily be captured on like 137 megahertz. And uh, all you have to do is just download one of the pieces of software to decode this information plug your Raspberry Pi uh, into your uh, RTL SDR, any kind of passive listening device. And again, we're only listening here, but you too pick up passing overhead weather satellite imagery as it's happening. Super cool project, lots of fun. Did I mention the International Space Station is also sending out messages? So there's a protocol called Slow Scan Television or SSTV. And the International Space Station, as it's passing overhead, um, which only happens, you know, on a, on a particular interval, is sending down television signal or essentially just, you know, images. And you can go outside at the right time of day or night and pick up the images coming from the actual International Space Station. So you are like almost we'll call it receiving or passively communicating with an international space station as it's sending down fun little pictures uh, year around. And so this is a, a recent screenshot from, um, from a bit ago. And there's a website that archives this, but, but just check this stuff out. Super cool, fun projects, uh, especially if you got kids, this stuff is, is right up there. Um, here's one for you, the radio sond, all right, also known as weather balloons in this country, at least. And what these weather balloons do is they're sent up by researchers to collect all kinds of atmospheric data, but they're constantly broadcasting and they're, they're sending their location and all of their measurements. And so if you're in an area where radio sonds are often um, sent up into the atmosphere um, and used by researchers, you can actively track them and also pull down some of their live uh, transmitted data regarding what the weather balloon is picking up and all of those environmental variables. You may also stumble across one or find one in the wild. Now you should return it to its owner. But another awesome cool thing that you too can do at home with a Raspberry Pi and an SDR. Did I mention good old FM radio? Yes, we, um, you know, most of these SDRs operate within that frequency range that supports standard FM radio, but we're not just talking standard anymore. You have stuff like RDS where it embeds that small data. Like, have you ever seen where maybe your car uh, or something is able to tell you the name of the song um, and the track information and the station information and even embed like a picture or something like that? And so you can decode data along with sound these days using a, a software-defined radio. Now, more recently, we have stuff like HD radio, which I'll tell you what, not the same by any means. It's a completely new standard, um, but it is. Uh, it just so happens to be running on the same frequency. Uh, it's just a little. It's, it's just very different. It, it, it's truly revolutionary compared to the way frequency modulation. Um, was being used for music uh, at the time. And so because it's very technical and because it's very deep, um, you know, using software to help decode HD radio is a very cool technique. It's a very fun process. And there's so much you can learn about how data is being transmitted today when it comes to something as simple as music. So great research opportunities there. Now, 
I've noticed that the question that Q&A board is starting to grow. Um, and, uh, and so I want to kind of just knock out a couple of the frequently asked questions and then we'll, we'll get to those. Right. And so let's start out with, uh, some important questions. Do you need a ham license? Um, and the answer is no. If you want to participate as a passive listener, you do not need one. It's because it's already in the air. There's technically nothing stopping you. Um, but there are still caveats. It's definitely not that simple. But for the most part, we're going to go with, no, you don't need it to listen. Now, yes, if you want to broadcast, do you want to participate in adding things? Do you want to be active in that sense? And it also depends on what frequency you're broadcasting on because different levels of your license uh, allow you to broadcast on different frequencies and different strengths. For those that are very interested, it's very fun to explore and get out there. Again, I'm not, but I've considered it. Um, we'll see, maybe one day. But uh, but no, to get started in any of the stuff that I talked about today here, you do not need a ham license. This is stuff that you can build and play with at home. Now, where's that caveat I mentioned? Oh, it's buried deep in some stupid freaking, you know, lawyer jargon. Uh, well, I've already highlighted it here for you. Section D says as follows. Transmitted over a communication system provided by a common carrier unless the communication tone, paging system, or communication. Wait, wait. Unless... It's a paging system. Huh, what the heck does that mean? Well, it just so happens that the only thing you technically are not supposed to be listening and decoding is pager data. All right, good old way to fix things, right? Um, you uh, you don't encrypt or scramble it because that's highlighted in A. You obviously, if it's encrypted or scrambled, you're not supposed to decode it. I, I get it, right? Somebody's trying to hide something. But they didn't fix the pager system. They just wrote a law to tell you not to decode the pager system. It's still unencrypted. Don't do this. Um, so let's talk about the illegal stuff. Decrypting encrypted traffic. Section A, we just mentioned. Commercial pager data, POXAG, FLEX. Uh, it, you know, uh, oftentimes uh, encrypted information is also going to be uh, police and law enforcement, government, um, things of that nature. Uh, they they have the opportunity to encrypt it, uh, and um, they ask you kindly to not decrypt it. Uh, it's also kind of difficult initially, unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, the other illegal stuff I mentioned, do not transmit without a license. That goes out to all you people that are trying to be a pirate radio host, people trying to interfere with emergency services. Uh, ADSB is cool and plane tracking is fun, but do not transmit that you are a plane. Right? That's how you get in a lot of trouble. Uh, now, there are exceptions, right? There are there are still some use cases where transmitting is acceptable uh, when it's stuff like super low power cross range. Think of your router, your Wi-Fi router at home is broadcasting. It is so low power and so close range, it's it's acceptable, right? Or the, those little FM transmitters in your car that people used to use so that you can um, convert your music to your radio without like any kind of like I don't know, cassette adapter. The point is, is things like Wi-Fi, things like Bluetooth, um, you know, anything within your vicinity, stuff, you know, stuff that's not going miles and miles, it is still perfectly acceptable to transmit. We just don't think about it in that context because it's kind of just, we're used to it. But uh, but don't do any of the illegal stuff. Um, and if you do want to transmit and you do want to communicate on the ham frequencies, do check out getting a license uh, and stay away from anything encrypted and stay away from pager data. Um, yeah, just just don't do it because um, uh, you're going to kill the fun for the rest of us and uh, nobody nobody wants to be that person. So so thank you. Um, don't be this guy. Uh, this is a, an art installation in New York where uh, it's called the Holy Pager and they used three software defined radios hooked up to a small computer like a Pi and they listened to the pager data um, in the vicinity of all of the hospitals. And I'll tell you right now, hospitals are the guilty player when it comes to pager data today. And imagine what kind of information is transmitted in a hospital environment. If you guessed HIPAA, you are correct. Um, and so, so this, this printed out all of the pager messages with all of the patient data on them, um, and it, and it just goes to show that um, wrapping a law around something without actually fixing the problem isn't exactly the best way to go about it. Um, but 
but keep in mind again i'm not condoning this this is definitely still illegal uh but there is technology out there if you are curious so uh so as we're starting to round up um you know i always like to leave um my uh my guests and attendees with thing places that they can go learn more right i talked about a lot of information very quickly today but uh but i didn't learn all of this you know magically out of thin air uh i have a couple of favorite youtube channels that you can check out so andreas spies is fantastic he's a great hobbyist and he's really fun educational videos and he has entire segments on um you know raspberry pi software defined radio capabilities um, and, and things around that. TechMinds is also a great tutorial um, for for all kinds of stuff that you can watch and, and, and work along with. And it really just does a great job at breaking down um, how SDR works and how a lot of these things particularly work. And then there's Modern Ham. Um, and that's a, a great place to kind of get a nice soft introduction to the concept of uh, getting into the hobby of, uh, you know, riding the airwaves, right? And so uh, some just some great places to check out that I I'd absolutely always suggest. Um, and with that, I would like to say thank you and open up the floor to questions. So um, looking over here, Ernest. All right, so Ernest took off. I guess I'll answer the questions myself. And he's back. Sorry, I'm I'm multitasking. Have a chat. Have a chat. Here. Oh, good man. Um, let's see. Uh, anybody have any questions? I don't see. There's a ton of questions. I don't know. I hope we don't run out of time. Let's get some questions in. I don't see. All right, so I'll just read them. Um, so I mentioned earlier about creating your own cellular network. Um, so what you want to do is is in on the software side of things. Uh, yes, you're 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 hooking into some kind of existing internet and network connection. Um, but the idea, like, yeah, you need to have. You can run a cellular network as a, like an isolated thing and not hook it to anything else, or you can backhaul it over the internet. Um, uh, hopefully that gets into it. And, and then again, I haven't made my own cellular network, but there's a ton of great research out there on how to build your own cellular network. Um, this is a good one coming in from, uh, from our very own Derek. Um, what is some of the legal issues uh, we need to be aware of when we start scanning or listening? And so, yes, I covered a lot of that uh, towards the end where um, listening is, is, is no harm, no foul, unless it's uh, encrypted information, then you want to just kind of stay away from it and pager data, right? And you have to make that extra step to decode the pager data. Uh, and so just don't do it. Um, all right, uh, we have a question here regarding, uh, for those that are starting out with SDR, do you, do you recommend a multi-purpose antenna for different projects? So you wanna have a variety of antennas. I actually have a bunch of different ones. Um, some of my antennas are these long, weird, adjustable ones. Um, I have much bigger antennas than this, and then other antennas are a little bit more like a, like a hard wedge that's set. And so what happens is the antenna um, is really important to setting the frequency that you're picking up. Um, and so you can buy purpose-built antennas that match uh, the frequency that you're trying to listen to or operate on, whereas some of these other more collapsible ones or flexible ones allow you to tune into the frequencies that you're trying to work with. Um, tons of great stuff online. In fact, when you buy an SDR, oftentimes you get the opportunity to get it as a kit with different types of antennas with it. All right. Uh, does rail use similar communications like, ah, so, uh, yes, there are communications surrounding rail. I didn't cover it, but, um, but yeah, you can listen to, to the whole myriad of planes, trains, automobiles, um, it, and boats. It's, you'd be surprised the things that, um, our modern infrastructure is blasting out in the airwaves on a regular basis. Um, our slides will be available through the B-Sides community. Um, any opinions on the yardstick one? So yeah, yardstick is another piece of hardware. There's just so many, like there's so many great pieces of software defined radio equipment out there that I can't even, um, you know, cover them all. So, 
Uh, but yeah, hard, uh, yardstick is also a great one. Um, and there's there's even stuff uh, focused specifically the Bluetooth. There's all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, does the TSA ever stop you? No, I've never been stopped by the TSA in my life. Um, and I wonder if it's all security theater then in that case. Um, any licensing requirements to use LoRa? No, LoRa WAN uh, and LoRa in general is close range, uh, low power transmission. It falls and classifies under the same thing as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So have a great time. Um, and uh, Greg, I grew up on the same street you did. So I think that covers all of the questions uh, that were asked during this session and uh, we're coming right up on time. So again, thank you everybody. Go out, buy yourself Raspberry Pi. Go get an SDR, go, um, you know, ride and surf the airwaves and see what kind of great information you can download, pick up, transmit if you're licensed and just have good, safe fun. Thank you.